Good morning to our Facebook uh, audience. As you can see, the background is a little different. I'm in the Salvation Mall, uh, our young, uh, young people's building, uh, recording this, uh, this message because we're actually having some work, uh, work done to the stage in the sanctuary, and, and we, could, we couldn't do both at the same time. So we're over here today. Next week, we'll come from the sanctuary. I uh, want to say before I get into the message that uh, since March 15th, 16th, 17th, uh, the COVID virus has basically shut things down, uh, and uh, our, our lives are completely turned upside down. And so... Uh, well, we're definitely been praying for the people who have been affected by this uh, sp specifically, and we've had a lot of people healed from the virus, and so we're we're glad about that. Uh, I'm going to pray this morning as we get ready to start this message uh, relative to the racial tension that's in our country again uh, because of the mistreatment. Uh, specifically of law enforcement with uh, black men. And so we, I'm going to pray a prayer before I actually get into the message and, uh, and deal with this. All right, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, our hearts are heavy, broken. Please give us eyes to see and ears to hear where your spirit is working. Help us to see every person the way you see them. Break our hearts for what breaks yours. God, let us not merely say that we love each other. Give us strength to mourn with those who mourn, to weep with those who weep. Let your justice roll like waters. Let your righteousness and love flow from us like rivers of living water. Purify our hearts, Lord, and fill us with genuine hunger for justice, for mercy, and for true peace. Heavenly Father, let justice and mercy start with me. In Jesus' name, amen. So we pray that prayer in, in light of the, the fact that uh, even though our uh, founding fathers said that all men are created equal and that uh, even when we play the, pray the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, we say with liberty and justice for all, uh, we can see from, I mean, it doesn't take a blind man, a blind man can see this, that it's not being carried out in our, in our lifetime. Uh, I mean, just in the last few years, you know, you had Trayvon Martin, 17-year-old, get shot uh, by a neighborhood watch person, and uh, he gets set free. And then you have Sandra Bland, who gets stopped in a traffic accident, uh, not accident, excuse me, uh, she cha mischanged lanes or something, and she got pulled over. And then the, the officer was very uh, mean to her, took her to jail, and she died two, two or three days later and uh, all of the clouds surrounding all that. Uh, just so many different things that uh, was going on. And then of course, with George Floyd, the whole world saw that. And uh, here's a man who, and, 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 and even these people who did things wrong still don't deserve to be treated uh, in this way. And uh, if, if, if it had been a black officer uh, and the, the, the man that was on the ground with his with the officer's neck on his neck happened to be white. Uh, it would have been a whole different ball game, and anybody that don't believe that uh, is living in a dream world. And so that's why we're praying for justice around this world. Now, if you'll look in your Bibles to the book of Romans, uh, chapter 8, verse 32, uh, the Bible says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? The message translation says it this way. If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, Jesus, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us. I want to talk about this morning how to receive from God, how to receive from God. You know, uh, I struggle personally, I struggle with the word deserve. Uh, when people say that you deserve, you know, this good and this bad, I mean, not bad, but this good things that happen. 
And I struggle with it, but the reason I struggle with it is because I still have a residue of mentality that the word deserved is uh, coupled with uh, performance. And so I know that I haven't always performed well, and nobody that's listening to me this morning has always performed well. And so when someone says, you deserve to be happy, you deserve to have a new house or a new car, or uh, uh, good things happen to you, uh, I twinge a little bit. But uh, I want to share this morning that we don't deserve it because we've earned it by self-effort. We don't deserve good because we've... Uh, uh, been good enough or done good enough. We deserve it because God made us right. He, Jesus Christ, uh, his death on the cross, his finished work makes us the righteousness of God in Christ. Praise God. Faith in, in what Jesus did makes us righteous. And so we deserve it because we're right in God's sight, not based on performance, but based on Jesus' performance. And then secondly, uh, we don't deserve it because we've been good enough. We deserve it because he's good. God is good. Jesus is good. A amen. The Holy Spirit is good. We, we deserve it because he's good. Amen. amen. And so the first thing that I want to say this morning, relative to the verse I just read, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? The first thing I want to say to you this morning is that you have a right to receive from God. Romans 8, 16 and 17 says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit, our human spirit, that we are the children of God because we've had exercised our faith in Christ. We believed on Christ. We've received him. He's given us a new heart, a new spirit. And the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we're a child of God. Hallelujah. And if children, then heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. He made us a son of God. We, faith in Christ makes us a son of God. We have a right to receive because we're his son. Amen. We're not just anybody. We're, we're a son of God and, and praise God, we have a right to receive from God. Don't spend any more time feeling like I can't ask God for this and I can't ask for God for that because I have not always performed uh, to 100%. Nobody has. But Jesus, he was the only one that performed 100%. And we exercise our faith in him. We are made right. We are, we are make 100. We pass the test because we have faith in what Jesus did. So you have a right to receive. Secondly, this morning, uh, I want to say to you that uh, in order to receive from God, you need to practice the presence of God. You need to practice the presence of God. One of the things that should have been happening in our lives during this shutdown, uh, during this uh, several months now uh, of not being able to do what we normally do, is we should have had more time to spend with the Lord. We had, should have had more time to read Scripture, more time to pray, more time to be quiet before the Lord and listen to what He has to say for us. And so practicing the presence of God will help you to receive from God. Acts 13, verse 2. The Bible says, As they ministered to the Lord, as they worshiped the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said. See, I'm convinced that if you'll spend time in the presence of God, and that may be, for me, it's, it's walking. A lot of times I'm walking. The Holy Ghost said, the Lord will talk to us if we'll listen. If we'll get quiet enough, still enough, and we should have been able to do it better during this time, because you can't run in like you used to. So spend some of that time. Uh, one of the things we've done in our house is spend a lot more family time that uh, we haven't done. We've been eating at the table together and playing games together, and we, we uh, for some reason, we had not done that, uh, but we've done a lot more of that. And so that's something good to have pulled out of this virus time, and I'm sure that that's the same in your case. But don't neglect your time with, alone with the Lord. Do that during this time because if you practice the presence of God, God will speak to you. And he's spoken to me. And I'm speaking to you. Praise God. First John 2 and 20 says, but you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. The Holy Spirit is in you. That's the unction from the Holy One. The Holy Spirit is our comforter, our counselor, our strengthener, 
our advocate, our intercessor, our helper, our standby. He's the Holy One. The Bible says he leads us and guides us into all truth. He shows us things to come. He teaches us all things and brings all things back to our remembrance, whatever he said to us. The Holy Spirit lives in us. And if we will practice the presence of God, God will speak to us. 1 John 2, 27 says, But the anointing that you've received, that's the Holy Spirit, of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you. In other words, you don't need natural man, people who are not born again. You don't need them to teach you anything because the Holy Spirit is going to teach you, either teach you through studying the Bible yourself or teach you through the teaching of other people. Uh, you still need to be taught, but the Holy Spirit is going to teach you. You don't need natural man, unsaved man, to teach you anything. But as the same anointing teaches you all things and his truth and is no lie, and even as it has been taught you, you shall abide in him. So you have a right to receive from God. And, and if you practice the presence of God, God will speak to you. The third thing I want to share with you this morning is not only practice the presence of God, but practice hearing his voice. Practice hearing his voice. I, I did a, a lengthy teaching at Bible study on how to hear from God. And, and, and one of the things that you can do is to start off with, you just ask the Lord a simple question, not, not anything really complicated, uh, but a simple question that uh, is relative to your life. And then you get a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen and you get quiet first. I recommend some soft worship music. Uh, not a lot of singing. If you can, if you can just have instrumental soft music, it's even better. Uh, but you just have some soft music, soft worship music going on, and you spend time with the Lord. You quieten yourself down. You 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 center yourself in, and then you begin to listen to the free, flowing thoughts that come. Not the analytic, uh, figuring things out, uh, rational thoughts that come in your mind, and uh, but you want the free-flowing thoughts. You've asked him a question, and now you're listening to him for an answer. And just start writing everything that you hear. Just write it down. It may not even make any sense at the time. Just write it all down. And then after you're, you're through, then you can go back and look at it and, uh, and actually get somebody that you trust that's been walking with the Lord a long time and kind of go over it with them and, and, and kind of get a witness from them and, and balance that and see what the Lord has said to you. Amen. Practice hearing his voice. John 10, 4 says it this way. But when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know, for they know, not they think they know, for they know his voice. John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. Now, you know Jesus is not talking about a, a sheep, an animal sheep. He's talking about people. He's talking about his disciples. He's talking about people that follow him. My sheep hear my voice. And uh, it's just like you, you call somebody on the telephone. Now, if somebody has never called you before and they call you on the telephone, you're not going to recognize their voice. You're not going to know who this is. They're going to have to identify themselves. And uh, it's sad to say that a lot of people don't, Pray and listen enough to recognize the voice of God when he speaks. Uh, I know sometimes if, you, if I have a cold or something, somebody will call me on the phone and I won't sound like myself. People have to, who is this? I said, this is, this is Chuck. And they said, oh, you don't sound like yourself because I had a cold or something like that. So there's, sometimes there's things that cloud, amen, the voice of God. And you have to learn how to practice the voice. Now, somebody that I spend a lot of time with, uh, can call me on the phone. They don't have to identify themselves. I say, hey, so-and-so, because I recognize their voice right off. And I'm telling you, if you'll learn how to practice hearing the voice of God, practice the presence of God, my sheep know my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Amen. So practice hearing his voice. Proverbs 4, 20 through 23 says it this way. My son, pay attention to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. Now, he's not talking about your natural ear, uh, not, not necessarily. I mean, you might get an audible voice, but I, I usually don't get an audible voice. I have an inner voice. I have an inner witness. I hear him from inside in that spirit man. And then it sends those words to my thought processes. 
Praise God. So he says, incline thy ear, your spiritual ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. And he's not talking about your blood pumper there. He's talking about your spirit man, your heart, your inner man. For they are life. What are, what are, what are life? His words are life to those who find them. Amen. And health or medicine to their flesh. Praise God. Keep your heart, your spirit man, with all diligence. In other words, kind of it's, it, it's, it, it's the, keep your heart is in the sense that uh, in the old night days uh, or even the, the, the Calvary, uh, they would have uh, people on the walls of the fort and they would be watching in all four different directions so that they could see the enemy coming when he comes. Well, that's what it means when it says keep your heart with all diligence. It means mount garrison around your spirit. Protect your spirit. Protect your eye gate, your ear gate. Praise God. Keep your spirit man with all diligence. For out of it, your spirit man, are the issues or the forces of life. So you practice hearing his voice. You, 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 you listen. You pay attention to his words. Praise God. Proverbs 3 and 3 and 6 says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. Again, your spirit being. Uh, in all thy ways, I know you know this, acknowledge him. Now notice it said, not in all his ways acknowledgement. It says, in all thy ways acknowledge. How many people know we got some ways? <laughs> and we need to acknowledge God in our ways, good, bad, or ugly. Amen. And the Bible says if we'll acknowledge him in all of our ways, he will direct our steps. So, so we have a right to receive from God. We're going to practice the presence of God. And we're going to practice hearing his voice so that we can have direction in our life. So we can have the answers to our questions. You know, a lot of people, when this virus came out, they want to know what happened. I began to pray. I had been shut in the church the first part of the year for uh, 40 days I've been in the church. And uh, uh, some people say, well, what did the Lord say? Well, he didn't say as much as I wanted him to say. Uh, but as soon as this virus came out in March and I saw it, I knew. And I, I began to pray. I said, Lord, where is this coming from? See, this. The, a lot of people attribute sickness to God. You know, they say, well, the devil, I mean, God put cancer on my grandmama. Or, or sickness and disease does not come from God. He doesn't have COVID-19 virus. God didn't, he didn't put COVID-19 uh, uh, COVID virus, the coronavirus, whatever you want to call it. He didn't put it on people. Okay? It's evil. And we live in a fallen world. The scripture calls Satan the little G-O-D, the God of this world. He is in charge in the world. Now, he's not in charge of you and I because we have given our life to Jesus Christ. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. See, he's the God of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world, which means he's not our God. But he has reign. All this stuff that's happening, God is, you know, God's not into COVID. Not, he's not into officers. Listen, God's not doing this. He's not having an officer put his knee on George Floyd's neck and killing him. That's evil that does that. And Satan is the author of evil. I just need you to know that. That, uh, that all of the racism and all that stuff, that is not God. That's not our God. Our God, our God made one human uh, race, one race. And all of these different colors and pigments, uh, we still bleed the same blood. Uh, you, you, can take, you can take the, 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 the worst attitude of, of racism, and you cut them, and you take the... On the, other, on the other end of the spectrum, somebody from another race, they still, they still bleed the same, okay? So God is not in charge. of he's, he, he didn't have anything to do with this racism, okay? Man, Adam was the God of this world, and Adam forfeited his right to be God of this world because he sinned. He disobeyed God, and the, the, the reign was given to man, and man has messed up this world. You know, God's not messing up the ozone layer. God's not into icebergs melting. That's not all. That's, he, that's all a result of our hands on stuff that we shouldn't have messed with. Amen. Okay, the environment, all that stuff. So stop giving God credit for that because he's not doing that. He's not, he's not doing the racism and he's not doing the COVID virus. All right. 
And so the Lord began to, I begin to ask him, said, where is this coming from? He said, man got together. And, and, and I begin to know from the outset that there was a, like there was a collaboration of men for more than one nation that got together and actually came up with this virus. This virus is actually not new. If you, if you research it out, the, the 19 part of it, the, the, stream of, the stream of this virus is new, but COVID been around for a while, okay? That's, that's why they call it 19, okay? There's been a whole lot of viruses and stuff that's going around. But this stream of virus was put together by some men somewhere, uh, it could be women too, I, when I say men, I'm talking mankind, and they put it together and they released it. And they released it, uh, it could have been through uh, cruise ships, could have been through uh, airplane travel. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm convinced that it was released through all means of travel. That's how you spread the virus uh, all over the world. And so God didn't do that. Man did that, okay? Now, as a Christian, you and I could stand against the, the wiles of the enemy. The Bible says put on the full armor of God, amen, and stand in the evil day. Praise God, and you, you're covered Praise God by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm not fretting. I'm not worried. This virus is not taking me out. Hallelujah. I say it in the face of the devil. I'm, I'm not, we don't have anything to fear of the devil. He's not giving us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. And if, if he's over cancer, he's over COVID-19. Okay? And, and God didn't put it on us. Amen. And so I'm using my faith. And I heard the Lord say that man released it. Anything the devil or man does, God is over that. The name of Jesus is above every name. COVID-19 too. Okay? And so we use our faith. Not a time not to use your faith. This is the time to use your faith and stand against all of that for all you that's listening to me this morning. Do not cower down. Do, uh, 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 you know, talking about well, things are never going to be the same. However it's going to be, we're going to still win. I promise you that. However it is, however it changes, we, the body of Christ, are still going to win. Praise God. So we have a right to receive. I have a right to receive the good things from God. I practice the presence of God, and I practice hearing his voice. The, the fourth thing that I want to share with you this morning is after you've practiced the presence of God, you've heard his voice, you need to practice instantly obeying his voice. Now, I, I grew up in, in my household. My daddy would tell me to do certain things, and I might uh, be watching TV. And uh, he, he, would, uh, he would come back and explain it to me in another language. <laughs> Amen. He would have belt or, or something. He, he, he didn't mean for me to do it tomorrow. You know, if he wanted me to clean my room or cut the grass, he meant to get up from what you're doing and go do this. And then you can come back and watch TV or, or whatever I was doing. Amen. And so, in, likewise, we need to instantly obey his voice. You know, the Lord says, pray for this person. He don't mean pray for him next week. He means pray right now. You might be intercede for that person who's in trouble. If he says give to this person, he don't mean uh, five years from now. Amen. You need to ask the Lord simple questions. You know, Lord, what would you have me to do? And, uh, and you write it down, and you, and you get a clarity. And uh, if you're not sure, ask somebody uh, more spiritual than you. Amen. It's been walking with the Lord, and let them, uh, you know, be, a, be accountable to them, and let them check things. I don't care what kind of revelation you got. You, you, you're not so special that you can't check your revelation with people that's been walking with the Lord to see if you really heard from God. Practice instantly obeying his voice. James 1.22 says it this way. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now, it doesn't good, do good to hear something and not practice it. The whole thing about coming to church, the whole thing about reading your Bible is to hear from God. And when you hear from God, you do what he says. You do what he says. Joshua 1.8 says, the book of the law shall not depart. This book of the law, talk about the Bible, shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. 
Well, if you if you then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. If you don't do the first part of that clause, which says don't let the word depart from your mouth. Don't uh, let it you meditate in that word day and night. You observe to do. There it is again. Obeying. Observe to do according to everything that's written therein. Then. So don't expect good prosperity and good success if you have not practicing instantly obeying God. Delayed obedience is disobedience. I'll say it again. Delayed obedience is disobedience. And all of us, Lord have mercy, are guilty of procrastination. Procrastination is a demon and, and it keeps churches from growing. Uh, you know, your church is not, not growing because uh, you don't have enough people. You do have enough people. If all the people that you had, whether it's five or 50 or 500, if everybody moves in, 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 in unity and gets it done, your church will grow. Churches don't grow by accident. They grow intentionally. So you have to hear from God and you need to put it in action. Acts verse uh, chapter 9, verse 6. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will you have me to do? That's Paul on the road to Damascus. He's on the ground. Amen. And his eyes are blinded. He, he can't even see. And the Lord said to him, arise and go into the city and it will be told thee what you must do. What you must do. Now, this verse has given me some trouble over the years because, I mean, he's, ha he's got a face to face with Jesus himself. I mean, he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm standing in front of Jesus. I said, Jesus, what would you have me to do? And Jesus says, go down to this city and it will be told you what to do. In other words, go somewhere else. <laughs> and, and that gave me a little problem. But the Lord sent him to Ananias because he wanted him to learn how to listen, not only to God, but God through a man. A lot of people say, I'm not following man. I'm following God. Well, if you really understand scripture, you can't follow God without following man because God always uses a man. He has always had a man. And God speaks to the man and we're supposed to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit in the set man. That, that If you're going to try to follow God without listening to people, then you're, you're going to have a hard time because God's using somebody uh, to speak to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the holy name.